Hello St John's and welcome to what we um, are going to blessedly call the last week of online church. Uh, it's been special to be able to do this with you in this way but uh, we're looking forward much more to doing it in person. And uh, next week we'll be back on July 26th at our normal service times, uh, 9am, 10.30am and 6.30pm for church face to face. Uh, some things will be different when we arrive. If you've got kids, they'll head straight down to the hall and not into church as normal. When you come into church, uh, you'll face the usual um, kind of corona precautions of uh, sanitation and contact registering. When you come into church, we'll be sitting a little further apart than we normally do, all those things you expect. What you may not expect is um, uh, church might be a little bit more uh, different to normal too. We're not allowed to sing congregationally at the moment. We will have some music, but we won't all be singing together. And that'll be different while some things remain the same. While we hear God's word preached and we pray, uh, that'll be a, a wonderful thing. Uh, for now, we'll be um, joining together in church and then leaving uh, and not staying for morning tea. We hope to reintroduce that in the next month or so. We'll see how we go, but get the, we'll get the first things right first. Um, and make sure we all enter happily and safely. Uh, it may well be that you're not quite ready to come back and we want to say that's okay. And we hope to be live streaming the service uh, at the 10.30 a.m. service and we'll put details out on email. Uh, and if you're not quite ready to come back for any reason, that's fine with us. We hope you can be really blessed by that and we look forward to seeing you soon. It could be that you're someone that's watched St. John's online and haven't ever been here in person and we want to say, We'd love to meet you. I'd love to meet you. Um, and please come along and come and meet with us. We'd love to get to know you. That'd be a real thrill. But it's really exciting. The last week of online church in this format. And uh, the doors, they're open. So next week, I'll see you inside them. Let's do church together. Bible reading is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. 
The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. This is the word of the Lord. Hi and welcome to St John's today. It's so great to see you all back here. Um, James and Kiara, lovely to see you. Amazing to see Henry grown up so much. COVID is like um, steroids for kids. It's like stop motion animation. It's incredible. Uh, Rosie, great to see you at the door, welcoming people again. Uh, what a treat to see your smiling face on a Sunday morning. Wendy, uh, you're here. You're so welcome, both you and your mask. Uh, both masked and unmasked superheroes are welcome at St. John's. No judgment here. After all, this is not America. Praise the Lord. Um, Lay, nice to see you back in your regular spot on the lounge. This is all great. Well, actually, there's no one here. <laughs> no one here but me and Nick, who's filming today. Say hi, Nick. <laughs> and uh, next week, however, we'll have the doors open at our usual times of 9am and 10.30 and 6.30pm uh, in the evening and we'll be back. Um, some things will be different and uh, we've already explained a few of those things uh, but we'll be doing the usual things of praying and hearing God's word and having a chat. Uh, we'll be remembering and I hope experiencing the truth of Psalm 133. Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers and sisters dwell in unity. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Uh, to finish off what's been a really um, strange four months apart, and one we may, well, we may well taste again, who knows, um, I thought it'd be good to round off our online church uh, by returning to where we began in Psalm 46. I want to reflect on Psalm 46 and reflect back on how we've gone and give you the opportunity to reflect on how you've gone and to prepare us for return. And uh, we're going to work through three sections of the psalm as it counsels a realistic faith, a focused faith, and a wise faith. And to consider what great things God has done and some of the great things we've been able to experience in him over the last difficult months. Why does God allow something like the coronavirus? And can there really be a, a real deep belief in the God who designs a world like this and allows it to run in this way? Well, I really hope that these last few months and the months that will come for it will last a while really have been and will be for us the, the birth of a more realistic faith. After all, Psalm 46 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. God is our strength and refuge and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way. The psalm doesn't just sort of um, mention the earth giving way. It doesn't speak about the earth giving way as if it's something that happens, you know, once every thousand years. Um, the picture of the psalm is of a regular expectation. Uh, it's not if the earth will give way, but the earth will give way. And um, the picture, as we talked about at the beginning of coronavirus, is a circle of destruction with the mountains falling into the sea and the sea throwing themselves against mountains and the mountains falling into the sea and the sea throwing itself against mountains ad nauseum. Uh, and that's a very um, sobering account of the world which God has made in his love and yet in his wisdom uh, has allowed to include tragedy and suffering. Um, this is a normal feature of our world. 
I want to remind you of that um, famous picture I showed you at the beginning of uh, COVID-19, of that great wave off Kanagawa. And I pointed out to you just how mountainous that wave is. You know, it makes Mount Fuji look like a, you know, a pimple on someone's cheek by comparison. And I pointed out to you just how chaotic the world can be. And I want you to see something else today. I want you to notice that these sailors go out into that as a matter of a normal day's work. Now, some people are actually very well habituated to understand that the world has real darkness and difficulty in it and Christians ought to be among those people. So here's a really deep dose of realism that we've been drinking in for months now, which reminds us that God allows disaster in his world. He allows disaster. And therefore the existence of disaster is not a challenge to the goodness of God. The existence of disaster does not challenge our belief in the goodness of God. So how's it gone for you? How have you gone with this uh, excessive dose of realistic trouble? Uh, after all, we know that in many ways we've been spared from it. I wonder if you've ever found yourself in the last months sort of shaking your fist at God, saying, God, why do you allow this to happen? Um, I want to really dignify that response for two reasons. One, the scriptures are full of people who do that and are not condemned for it. Um, in some ways, this response to God is uh, uh, the response of a faithful person that knows this is God's world and he really does have power and control. And uh, he can be wrestled with over this, uh, not as if we had any kind of upper hand, but because we know he really can answer prayers and he can change things. And why has he not? In fact, when we come back, we'll have some services of lament that will help us um, pray those kinds of prayers to God. We would love God in his mercy to resolve this situation now. Uh, why has he not? It's not faithless to shake our fist at God. Uh, it may well be a great prayer of faith. However, perhaps you found yourself shaking your fist at God in a way that has eroded your faith, um, that maybe began with faith and then became doubt, uh, or never began with faith and began with doubt. Um, in that case, I want to say here is your dose of realism. You can, here is a lesson in faith. You can only trust God in what he's promised. And while I suspect if your Bible's like mine, there might be a page at the beginning of your Bible, some Bibles have these that sort of list the promises of God. The editors of those pages do us a great disservice because they almost always outline all the good things God's promising us. And they very rarely include persecutions and tragedy and suffering. But the Bible is so clear that these experiences are part of God's promise to us too. They're not avoidable. It's just realism. So I hope we can learn and continue to learn a more realistic faith that our trust in God might actually grow, not, not on a kind of cloud of fancy, but on the, um, on the basis of the very words and expectations he's given us. That's a realistic faith. Well, the second lesson from Psalm 46 is that if we're going to have a real faith in God in these times, it will need to be focused for though the world is a circle of destruction, though mountains fall into the sea and the sea knock mountains over, the psalm turns to one place. It says, There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within everywhere. Um, technically true, but it's not what the psalm says. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help everyone. Um, it's possible. In, in every day, in many ways, yes. But it's not what the psalm says. God will help her at break of day. There, there's a place, you see. There's a focus to this trust of God. The Israelites were, weren't told, you know, God's the Lord of everything, so just go about, so everything's fine. Go about your day like normal. He said, no, no, God's the Lord of everything, and he's put his promise in Zion, on the, the city on a hill, um, Jerusalem. And there's his temple. And that's the place that God has promised to protect. And so you can put your faith in God's salvation there. And we have exactly the same experience in Jesus. 
Um, throughout the Bible, God says, trust in this rock, trust in this anchor, trust in this mountain, trust in this city. And then finally he says, trust in my son. He says, the rest was just picture language to lead you here. Uh, this is where you really need um, to cast your eye and sink your anchor. Uh, this is the real mountain. And uh, this is where you need to focus your trust. Hebrews 12 says, Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. There's a focus to faith. We don't just trust God in everything. Oh, I hope, I hope we do trust God in everything. But that's not a casual, it's not trust God in everything as if God was working equally in the same way everywhere at the same time. No, no, he's acted to save us in Jesus. And our eyes ought to be glued there. Uh, let me ask you, when uh, the psalm describes Jerusalem, it's lovingly described. The psalmist knows the joint. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The city becomes a person. It's, it's a she who's saved, not just any time, but like the break of day, the moment the light hits, God comes to her attention. There's such focus. And uh, I ask you, do you know Jesus like that? Um, is Jesus like, I know God helps me in Jesus, a general truth that you couldn't describe to anyone? Or have you found that this has been a rich time um, for seeing your Lord again? We've looked through Luke's gospel for that very reason, that we'd sit at his feet and be careful how we hear and learn again who our Lord is and why we ought to trust him. How's this three, four months been for you in uh, sitting at the feet of Jesus and focusing your attention on him? I found I have a bunch of different faiths. I think I'm a multi-faith person. <clears throat> it's not what you think it is. That is, I have faith in exercise during this time because I've found when I exercise, I feel a bit better. And when I don't, and I haven't been lately, I feel pretty rubbish. That's a perfectly reasonable faith. I have faith in my family relationships at this time that when things get a bit upsetting, they might come to my rescue. And fortunately for me, you know, they have. I have some faith in financial stability and, um, uh, well, in the need for financial stability, and I've been lucky. Some of you haven't. Um, those are all reasonable faiths, but they're only partial. Uh, because my health has been partially taken from me and my family relationships might have become harder. Some of them might have, actually. And, um, my finances might have gone south, and if they don't now, they might another day. And these, these, these faiths, they're, they're legitimate, and they're what most Australians have as the sum total of faith. They're legitimate, but they're like, um, it's like stretching a blanket to keep yourself warm in the middle of winter, and you can never quite get it over all your legs and your arms and your shoulders. And we need more. And uh, this is why our faith is focused not on those things, which we were right to have some partial trust in, but on Jesus, who we can trust when the things go terribly wrong, that he will still be there, that he'll still keep us safe, that he'll still love us, he'll still save us, not only from the um, kind of the hopelessness of trouble in this world, won't save us from the trouble in this world, let me make that clear, but will save us from hopelessness in trouble in this world and will save us from the judgment of God to come. Uh, that's why our faith is focused on Jesus and I hope you are getting to know him with the fine detail with which the psalmist focuses on the city of God, that fortress, that temporary saving place of God in his day. Finally, having realised that we have a realistic faith and a faith that must be focused, a focused faith, we learn from the psalm to have a wise faith. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he's brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth, breaks the bow, shatters the spear, burns the shields with fire and says, be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in all the earth. Uh, this is the authentic note of wisdom in the Bible. 
um, to be stopped and recognised that God is God and we are not. Um, it's the, uh, the note of wisdom in Proverbs. It's the note of wisdom in Psalm 2, when God declares he's anointed and stops the nations. It's the note here. In, there are various times in the Bible where God did that. that. That's why it says, past tense, come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he's brought on the earth. He stopped Egypt. He stopped the Canaanites. He stopped Babylon and Assyria. There are times when people genuinely uh, were stopped and ought to acknowledge that God is God. It's also going to happen in the future. Um, uh, he will make wars cease to the ends of the earth. This will happen. I will be exalted in the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Uh, there's more of this to come, and, and certainly the moment when Jesus returns. Behind me you can see the window of our church that reminds us of the return of Jesus, probably out of focus. Let me bring it into focus for you. And I've told you before, there are soldiers there weeping, just as the book of Revelation says, when people see Jesus again, they'll weep for what they've done. They'll weep that they didn't stop. They'll weep that they didn't know God. Uh, and this psalm says, don't weep then. Stop now. Be wise. Be wise. Be still and know that I am God. Uh, we've all been stopped to a degree and we've all learnt all sorts of little bits of wisdom along the way. Um, you know, uh, when to go to the shops, when not to go to the shops, uh, how to work from home and juggle kids or not. All little wisdoms. Um, how has the deep wisdom of sitting in humility before the God of all the earth gone for you? So is that something you've had in your home, in your own life? Uh, it's so easy to do, I think, when you come to church and praise God, we'll do it next Sunday. But how have you gone at home? And if church is taken from you again, do you have a place where you're on your knees before the Lord? Do you have a time of prayer, um, a reading of the scripture, the moment where you still yourself before God will still you so that you can stop and listen to something other than the blood beating in your ears and recognise that the Lord is the Lord and you are not. Uh, I've had that in a number of ways in this time, but I want to pay particular tribute to those few people uh, in the morning, 8am in the morning, who, you know, people like me who've just had that slot available and have made it for prayer. And just how, um, how important that has been. I want to thank Heather. I want to thank those other people who've been partnering in prayer in that way. Um, uh, for everyone's sake, but also for my sake, uh, that I might have uh, some time amid all the craziness to stop and remember uh, that God is God. Um, I really hope you've had that. And if you haven't, I, let me s spur you on. Let me, let me um, disturb you uh, to not re-enter normal life as we are re-entering church without um, a, a, a massive dissatisfaction uh, with uh, that absence of time for devotion and piety and smallness and praise before God. That's a wise faith. Hello, my name is Bill and I'm pleased to uh, be able to share some time in prayer with you all. Lord Jesus, we come to you in thanksgiving. We praise your name as our Lord and Saviour. We know that only through your death and resurrection are we redeemed. Father God, we acknowledge you as being sovereign over all things, that you are a God of grace, wisdom and mercy. We pray that we may all be mindful of this in this troubled and troubling time and we ourselves feel anxious about our family and loved ones in the world around us. We know that we can bring all things to you in prayer and supplication with petition and thanksgiving and know that our voice will be heard. We thank you, God, also that you are a God of justice. When in our own nation around the world, people are crying out for justice, crying out against racial and social inequality 
We know you hear those voices. We just pray that you give wisdom and insight and compassion to those who govern them, that they may respond in compassion and fairness, Lord. We thank for the, you for the way that you have blessed our nation, that uh, we do very well in terms of managing this pandemic. We think of those in other nations whose resources and infrastructure are less developed than ours, Lord, and uh, we know that suffering continues there. We pray for your protection for them, and we pray that we may all look towards them in compassion and that the world may respond to give them care and support. We come back to our own church, Lord, our church family. We thank you for the way that you bless us. We play, pray for future plans for, uh, uh, and we look forward in anticipation to regathering in the Congregation of Christian Fellowship. We know there's some difficult logistics to, uh, to get through and we just pray that your hand will be upon that. And we thank you for those who have already come forward and helped support that venture, Lord. And we just pray that we meet again soon in safety and in the comfort of your care. We pray for future plans to, uh, to get accommodation for uh, new ministry staff. Again, another challenge, Lord, and we thank you for the excess of uh, fundraising to date. And we pray that that success will grow. Pray, Lord, that we are all mindful of the providence that you extend to us and we reflect upon this in our own giving. So, Lord, as we go through the next week, we pray that we carry your light with us that we bear witness in all our actions we have with others, and that we respond with care and compassion and patience in this difficult time. And we bring all of this to you in your powerful name. Amen. Shall I take from your hand your blessing, yet not welcome any pain? Shall I thank you for days of sunshine, yet rumble?
May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same mind and attitude of Christ Jesus, so that with one mind and one voice we might glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ.